Hi, my name is Jay with Kick Freezeball Tables. First off, I'd like to welcome you to the Kick family. Today I'll be showing you how to properly set up and assemble your Kick Triple X Brown Table. I know sometimes these construction manuals can be pretty hard to read and go by, so I want you to refer to your manual for parts list only, as some of my videos do not reflect the diagrams located in your construction manual. With no further delay, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do is open your box and take a look at your contents. Then, you'll each piece out on your floor individually. If you are assembling your foosball table on the hard surface, I do recommend you lay down a large blanket or a large piece of cardboard. That way we don't damage our table during the assembly process. Next, you want to match each part that's inside your instruction manual. After you've laid out all your parts and you've matched each part to what's inside your instruction manual, if you notice any missing or damaged parts, please contact Kick Customer Support with pictures of the shipping label, the box label, the box itself, and the damaged part. Our contact information will be listed at the end of this video. For step one, we'll be attaching both of our soccer side skirts, number one, to both end panels, number nine. And what you want to make sure is that on the soccer side panel, that the groove that you see here faces inwards towards you, and that the ball entry hole right here faces uh, downwards closest to the floor. You also want to make sure that the end panel faces outwards. We'll be attaching uh, both of our side skirts using uh, bolts 49 and washers number 50. What you want to go ahead and do is align both the holes here on your end panel to both the holes on your soccer side skirt. And go ahead and insert your H49 bolt and your H50 washer. We'll be securing our side panel using our Allen wrench that was provided. For step two, we're attaching our soccer play field to the bottom of the assembly. And what you want to make sure is that the graphics on your play field are face down. You also want to make sure that the play field slides into this groove that you see here on your side panel. Once in place, you want to go ahead and attach your other side panel to the other side. You might notice on some of your side panels that the hole isn't punched all the way through. Here, you can see that it is, but sometimes uh, there's a small layer there between the side panel and the hole. You can just take your bolt though and just slide it on through uh, to make the hole. Step three, we're attaching our uh, playing field to both end panels using screws 56. Now you will need a Phillips head screwdriver, however, I will be using my impact driver fitted with the Phillips head tip to help speed along this process. You will notice that there are eight pre-drilled holes, four on both end panels. Just go ahead and insert your number 56 screw and secure. Next, we'll be attaching both of our end aprons A and end aprons B to both side panels using our number 49 bolt and number 50 washer. You just want to make sure that you align the holes on your side panel to the holes on your apron. You also want to make sure that the kick emblem on this side faces outwards towards you and that the locking mechanism that the ring that you see here faces outwards towards you also. If you notice that some of your flathead bolts are not aligned properly, you can use any flathead screwdriver to straighten them out. Next, you want to insert your number 49 bolt and number 50 washer and then secure with the L wrench that was provided.
Next, but still part of step four, we'll be attaching our support brace, number 11, using our support rods, number 17, and our number 52 uh, bolt. Um, this part's pretty simple. Um, you just wanna go ahead and align the support brace over the two holes um, on your side panel. Uh, you will notice that there are two support braces that have the grooves in them, like these, and some of the other ones that don't. You wanna use the two that have those grooves. You would also notice that, that some of the holes have not been completely punched through. Um, you can just go ahead and take your rod and just punch it through the hole. And go ahead and align your support brace. Next, we'll attach our number 52 nut to the end of the rod. You will notice that this sticks out just a tiny bit on this side, so you just wanna go ahead and thread this side just a couple of times, because you wanna leave enough room on the rod to uh, attach your other nut. Once you attach your other nut, you wanna go ahead and turn them the exact same amount of times on both sides until they are fully tightened. You might need to kinda of hold your rod in place with one hand, and then secure it with the Allen wrench with the other. One quick note, if you're having trouble tightening your rod due to the rod spinning, you can actually use two Allen wrenches, with one person on one side turning clockwise and the other person on the other turning counterclockwise, until both braces are tightened against both side panels. For step five, we'll be attaching the last of the three side panel aprons to both end panel aprons A and B, along with our four support braces and our number 54 screw. First thing you want to do is go ahead and attach all four of your support braces uh, to your side panel. Uh, you'll notice that there are two holes on, on either side of your table. You're going to line up your support brace with the hole. And secure. Next, we'll be attaching our side apron to both end panels and our support braces. What you want to make sure is that you fold the table inside like this in a triangular shape. You also want to make sure that the groove here faces down towards the groove that you see down here. So we're going to set it on top of the assembly just like so. Again, just making sure that these two grooves line up together. We'll be securing our side apron to our end panel using our number 49 bolt and number 50 washer. Just go ahead and line up the holes in the side apron, the holes in the end panel. Now you don't want to fully tighten your bolts at this time. You want to leave them a little bit loose at the very end. That way we have some wiggle room so that we can insert our playing fields at the end of this assembly. And once you're done with that, you can uh, come back and tighten all of your bolts. Next, we'll be securing our side apron to all four support braces using our number 54 screw. So we'll go ahead and line up the bottom holes here on both sides, there should be four on the bottom. And insert your H54 screw. Just line it up with the hole on the brace. Now you don't want to fully tighten your, your screws at this time. Again, you want to leave some wiggle room so that we can um, insert our play fill um, on the next video. It kind of leaves a little bit out on both sides. Next, we're attaching both of our slide scores, number 66, to both end panels of your hockey field. There are two pre-scored holes on your end panel. You just want to go ahead and insert your number 54 screw and secure.
Next, we're attaching our hockey field to the side of our assembly. What you want to make sure is that you align the hockey field into the grooves that you see here on both top and bottom. Just going to slide it into that groove there on the bottom. Now, if you don't have enough wiggle room on top to fit this piece in under the lip, just go ahead and back off these screws a little bit. Just kind of loosen them up just enough for you to uh, get up underneath there. You might even want to uh, remove the two screws on the side here to make it a little bit easier. Just want to take those two screws out. You can use the goalie hole or I mean uh, the ball entry hole on the side here to kind of pick it up and just slide that, that uh, table right in. And you see that lines up perfectly. And then you can go ahead and, uh, and tighten the bolts on the side there to your uh, support braces. Go ahead and put these screws back in. Next, we'll be securing the side of our hockey table down using screws number uh, 54. You will notice that there are three pre-drilled holes on both sides, the top and bottom. Just go ahead and insert your number 54 screw into the hole and secure. For step nine, we'll be attaching our three brackets to both sides of the um, end panel using screws number 57. We'll also be securing just the right side of our hockey table with the two screws that you see here, number uh, 55. And then the soccer table will be securing the bottom portion using screws number 54. You will notice that there are four pre-scored holes on all three of the holes here on the sides. So we'll go ahead and line up your bracket over those holes, just like that. Insert your H57 screw and secure. These bottom ones here are kind of at an angle. Just want to go ahead and just line it up over those holes. Next, we're going to secure your hockey table with screws number 55 and the two holes here that you see on the side. And then finally, you want to secure your soccer table on the bottom here using screws number 54. Next, we'll be attaching our fan number 29 to the bottom of our hockey table using our number 53 screw and our metal sleeves to the end panel, number 67. First thing you want to do is go ahead and attach the screen over the fan. Just kind of hold it in place. You want to make sure that the fan blade is faced inwards towards the hockey table. Go ahead and insert your number 53 screw. You want to go ahead and line it up over the hole that you see here. Next, you just want to go ahead and pull the fan cord through the hole here on the side. Next, and still part of step 10, we'll be attaching our goals over the holes on the end panel. There are two different style of goals here. 
Uh, one is for the hockey table, the air hockey table, and one is for um, your soccer table. You want to go ahead and use this one here for your soccer table. Um, you want to make sure that the white side is facing out. Just attach it right over the hole. We'll be attaching our goals with screws number 56. There are two holes here on either side of the goal. Just go ahead and insert your number 56 screw and secure it. Next, you want to attach your goal over your hockey table. You want to make sure that the open side is faced downwards. Step 11 will be attaching our leg levelers, number 35, to our A-frame legs, number 14. The part's pretty simple, you just want to go ahead and screw down your leg leveler all the way down to the bottom base of your leg. The purpose of these leg levelers is to stabilize your table during play. So that if one side's higher than the other, you just unscrew them a couple notches to even out your playing field. For step 12, we'll be attaching our leg brace number 15 to our A-frame using bolt 46 and washers 47. So go ahead and line up your A-frame, bolt the holes on the A-frame to bolt the holes on your uh, leg brace. Insert your bolt through the front of the A-frame. Here, using the elements that was provided. For step number 13, we'll be securing our table to our frame using our positioning locks number 18, our washers number 48. Our positioning locks number 16, along with washers 51. Our lock nuts number 19, secured with washers number 48. Now this is a two person job. However, I will be doing this part of the portion alone, but you will probably need some assistance in lifting it onto uh, the mount. You want to turn your table into a V-shaped formation like you see here. You want to make sure that the soccer table is facing up. We'll be securing our table with our position bolts number 18 and washers number 48 and our lock nuts number 19 with washers number 48 on the other side. You want to be sure that you hold this chrome cylinder that you see here in place from behind while you're inserting your position bolt or else it will fall out. And you also might need another person on the other side just to kind of hold up the other end so that you can align your bolt properly. Again, I do this by myself, and I have something actually propping up my assembly, so it makes it easier on me. What you want to go ahead and do is line up the hole on the center to the hole here. Again, holding that chrome cylinder piece from behind in place. Next, you want to add your washer number 48 onto your uh, positioning bolt and your lock nut number 19. your table using the two lock positioning nuts. We'll go ahead and turn your table over to where the two support braces are facing up. That way we can go on the next step, number 14, and securing our pool table play field to the top of the assembly. First thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and uh, secure your table and keep it from moving. And the way you do that is to go ahead and insert uh, your number 16 positioning bolt and number 51 washer into the bottom hole that you see here of the frame and into the bottom hole that you see here on the end panel. Once the table is secure, we can now insert our 
pool table play field onto the top of the assembly. Should just drop right in. Next, we'll be securing our pool table using screws number 55. You'll notice that there are six pre-drilled holes on both sides of the pool table and three holes in the front. Next, we'll be securing our side and corner plastic pieces with screws number 57. For step 16, we'll be inserting all of our player rods and attaching each player to each rod. The first thing you want to do is go ahead and remove the lock nut positioning bolt from the bottom. And then you want to go ahead and turn your table to the soccer field position. And go ahead and lock your table back in place using the positioning bolt. Next, we'll be inserting all of our player rods into all the holes on the side panels of your table. What you want to make sure is that you have the correct amount of players for holes in your rod and that they are positioned correctly on the table. You also want to make sure that there's a hole at the end of your rod on the correct side of the table where the handles will later go. You want to carefully review the diagram located in the instruction manual prior to inserting your rods. Or you can simply just fast forward and see where all the rods and player placements go. Here's how to set up the rods and players on your new kick foosball table. Place four handles on each side of the table in this specific order. Make sure the four handles for your home team are in this specific order, as shown in the diagram. Also make sure your players are facing the opposing team and toward the opponent's goal not the same team or your own goal. You want to go ahead and insert your player rods about halfway on the table like you see here. You will notice that there is a white plastic cap on each end of your player rod. You want to go ahead and insert those white caps into all the plastic rings that you see here on each side panel. There should be four on each side. So with the, again, with the plastic cap, the white end, you want to go to insert it into the uh, black plastic rings that you see here. And again, on about, about halfway um, onto the table. The other end should have a black cap on the end of it um, with the hole going through it for your other uh, rod to go through. Um, Again, you also want to make sure that you have the correct amount of holes per player on the rod and that they are positioned correctly onto the table. For instance, this first on the end panel, this first rod has four holes total, three holes for your player and uh, one hole for your handle. And the second one in has three holes for the, I'm sorry, two holes for the player and one hole for your handle. The third one in has four holes total, three holes for your player, and one hole for the rod. And the fourth one has five holes for the player, one, two, three, four, and five, and one hole for the handle. You want to go ahead and repeat the same sequence to the other side. After you've inserted all of your player rods and all your rods are in the correct position on the table, we come on the next step in attaching each player to each rod. You might notice that there are two different diagrams located in your construction manual. 
Step number 16 shows a three-man goalie setup. And step number 17B shows a one-man goalie setup. The difference between these two is basically a one-man goalie setup provides a more fast-paced, competitive style of play versus a three-man goalie setup, which provides more defense around the goal, making it harder to score. I personally like the fast-paced one-man goalie setup, so today I'll be showing you how to do that. However, if you prefer the three-man goalie setup, go ahead and just add the other two men um, on the goalie rod. Next, you want to insert your plastic stopper, number 23, on the end of the rod. Then your plastic washer, number 68. Followed by your white plastic stopper, or if you're going with a three-man goalie setup, then you want to go ahead and replace this with a goalie man. Insert your one-man goalie. Insert your other white stopper. Next, you want to go ahead and insert your rod, number 33, into your player rod, making sure that the thread end faces outwards. Go ahead and add your spring, number 26. Then your inner nut, you want to go ahead and screw it onto the end of your thread, making sure that this top end faces outwards. You want to go ahead and screw it all the way down to the bottom base of that thread. Then go ahead and push it through the second hole. You want to go ahead and add your washer, number 62, and your lock nut, number 61, to the end. And you want to secure with the wrench that was provided. You want to make sure that you screw the lock nut all the way down to the bottom base to where it's tightened against your side panel. Once you've tightened your bolt as far as it can go, you notice that there's still some wiggle room here, you can just go ahead and tighten the inner nut up against it. Next, we'll be securing all of our players to our rod, in this case our one player and the two white stoppers on the outer rod, uh, on both sides of the player using number uh, 59 screws. So we'll go ahead and line up the chest of the player to the center hole on the rod. Insert your screw to the front of the player and secure. Turn the player around, insert the screw to the back of the player and secure. Next, we'll be securing all four of our green triangle corner ramps to all four corners of our play field. These ramps will only work for a one-man goalie setup. They will not work for a three-man goalie setup. You want to go ahead and place your ramp into the corner of your play field. We'll be securing our ramps with screws number 60 and green caps number 28. For step 18, we're attaching both of our slide scores, number 34, to both end panels using screws number 54. You want to go ahead and go with the uh, red color to match your red team. You will notice that there are two pre drill holes on both sides of the end panel. Just go ahead and line up those holes with your slide score. Insert your number 54 screw. And secure.
Next, we're attaching our handles, number 24, to the other end of our rod using screws, number 58. This part's pretty simple, so I'm going to line up the hole in the handle to the hole in the rod. Insert your screw and secure. Next, we'll be securing our ball entry cups, number 21, into the hole on the side panels using screws number 57. This part's pretty simple, so I'm going to go ahead and line up the uh, pre-drilled hole here to the uh, hole on your, on your uh, ball entry cup. Insert your 57 screw and secure. Whenever you are turning your table over to the next play field position, you want to make sure that you lock all your rods in place. And to do that, you just want to make sure that the handles are all the way secured to the side panel, or as far as they will go, and go ahead and insert your rod stopper number 25 to the very end of the rod. This will keep the rod into a locked position. Congratulations! You have finally finished assembling your KIC Triple X Brown Table. You are now free to enjoy your table with your friends and family. I hope this instructional video was helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please visit us at www.kickfreezeballtables.com or email us at support at kickfreezeballtables.com.